and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome to the final upload on this channel of 2020, I should say. I had you there for a minute, didn't I? Just keeping you on your toes. But welcome back to the channel, guys. I hope you're all doing well. And what I want to say before we start this video, thank you to each and every one of you. Because on the pitch for Barca, it's been a tough year. We seem to say that over the last few years, indeed. But it has been a tough year again. And off the pitch, of course, for all of us as well. In everyday life, it has also been very, very tough. But each and every time, I've come back here to you guys and you've all given me such good energy, such good feelings. And I'm so, so thankful thankful to have every single one of you tuning in here and really making this community what it is. Hopefully in 2021 we can all push on and that is where this video begins because we are going to be talking today about the best Barca lineup that we have at our disposal right now in an ideal world and we're also going to be talking about whether our fortunes can change in the year to come. It's all coming up guys. A very happy new year to all of you. Let's do it. Because indeed, in terms of your questions, guys, many of you actually came up and I thought raised some absolutely brilliant points because many of you were saying, you know what, are we actually doing that badly? In terms of results, yes. In terms of points on the board, it's been an absolute disaster so far this season for Barca. But in terms of performances, you just feel as though we're not a million miles away. We're not all that far away from getting it right. But it's just a case of an individual mistake. It's just a case here about a miss at a bad time, a game change changing moment that always seems to backfire upon us and always seems to hurt us in the maximum way possible. And I think honestly, guys, football, it is a game of fine margins. That is something that if you've followed this sport now for a long time, you'll know that only too well. It doesn't take much to go from the top back down again. You think about us in 2015. We had the world at our feet. We were treble winners. We had the best front three the world has ever seen. We were looking as though we were going to dominate football for many, many years to come. But it all comes crashing down. If you make the wrong decisions at the wrong time, if things go against you, suddenly you can find yourself a long, long way away from where you once were. But it happens in the opposite way too. Yes, we may feel as though right now we're right down there. We are struggling. We are at an all-time low in terms of where we've experienced Barcelona to be. But it also doesn't take much to get you back up there. It just takes a bit of a run of form. It takes a switch in momentum. It takes maybe a change of leadership, either in coach or, of course, in presidency. And suddenly we can get back on the right road. And I want all of us to believe that in 2021, things can improve. Things can get better. And I think in particular, guys, when you are looking, of course, in terms of that best lineup, what is the best lineup that this Barca team, with the players that we have at our disposal, what will be the best lineup if everybody maybe was fit? You think about the injuries that we've had this season, Ansu Fati out for a number of months. You've had Dembele picking up injuries too. You've had Gerard Piquet, who's also been out for a long time. Sergio Roberto, we have not had it easy. By no means this season has Ronald Koeman had an easy time of it, and neither have us fans. But in terms of those people, PSG games in mind and beyond, I want to look here at what in an ideal world, if everybody was fit, what would our best team be? Because I honestly believe that after you've seen this, after you've looked at the players that we do have and will continue to have into 2021, we can do this. We can still be competitive as a team. We have good players. So let's kick off in goal. Let's start here with a completely blank canvas. And we're not even going to focus right now on the system. That is simply there, just an illustration. We're going to talk about that in a moment's time. But in goal, of course, we're going Marc-Andre Ter Stegen. In form, when he performs at his best, he can be without doubt one of, if not the, best goalkeeper in the world. And that's the level that we demand and expect from him. At left back, Jordi Alba is the overwhelming choice. Junior Ferpo did okay against a bar, but Alba, of course, undoubtedly is our option in the short term. Although long term, we still do need to think long and hard about that position. Right back, it's still, for me, is Serginho Dest. Even if Roberto was available, the future there lies with Dest and he can continue to improve in that role and really dominate that right-hand side. At centre-back, it's a bit more difficult. I would personally go right now with Ronald Araujo. I honestly believe that he can be our best centre-back that we have at the club right now. I think that he can be commanding. I think the 
that he can be strong, he can be a leader, all the things that we seem to lack at the back. I think alongside him, it's a question there of whether you would have Pique. If he was fit, would you bring him back in? But right now, I'm just going to say, let's have Longley there. If he can recapture, I wouldn't say form, because I don't think Longley is at the very, very top tier of centre-back that we need. I honestly don't. But I think if he can perform at a dependable level, he can partner Araujo and do OK. I do believe that. So I would go there at centre-back with Longley and Araujo. In midfield, though, is where it really does start to get very exciting. Because holding in that midfield, I would have Frenkie de Jong. Whether it's in a two, whether it's in a one, he would be my choice there, my pick for that holding midfield role. Now, in terms of the interior, this is where it gets very, very interesting and creative. Number one, I would have Ricky Pooch. I would have him there as a midfielder, as a starter in this team. He can do that. He can play that role and I would put him in this team and give him an opportunity. And alongside him, I would play Pedri. I would play there as a trio in whatever combination, whatever system you want to line up with. Pooch, De Jong, Pedri, they can make it work in a Barca team. Now, in terms of our attack, this is where it gets absolutely electric. Honestly, guys, I'm excited even talking about this. On the right-hand side, I would have there a fully fit, a fully firing Usman Dembele. Somebody there who can be a goal threat, who can be direct, who can be quick, who can give us width in this team. He would definitely start for me on the right-hand side. Messi would be in a central position. We're going to talk about his role in just a moment's time. And on the left, it would be... And Sufati, back in the team, hopefully back from injury around the end of February, start of March. And that will complete my personal best lineup. But let me just explain to you guys why I personally think that this could work and why I feel this could be so, so effective as a Barcelona team. Of course, you've got here the two centre-backs and you've got full-backs who can go forward. That's a very, very simple setup. We all know about that. But then when it comes to midfield, you can do different things. Yes, you could line up here in a traditional 4-3-3. You could have Messi as a false nine. You could have Ansu and Dembele there playing as wide players. You can have good combination play here with the midfielders. But you could also do different things too. Because the thing about this front three is, it's very, very flexible. Because you've got Messi here as that false nine. You can have him here dropping in and combining with Pedri like we know that he can. He also combines very well with Ricky Pooch. We haven't had the chance to see it very much. But whenever the two have played together, they have combined well. And what you then have with Ansu Fati is not just somebody here who can play as a winger, but he can also drift into that number nine position. So when Messi vacates that space, Ansu can very easily, very conveniently move into that. And of course, Alba there. He can have the freedom to roam on that left-hand side. But it also works in exactly the same way if you really wanted to stick with that 4-2-3-1 formation. You could quite easily here play De Jong. You could play Pooch in the holding role. You could have Messi and Pedri here linking up in those central areas. Or you could even swap it round. We have seen Pedri playing in that deeper role. And you could then have Pooch as the 10. Or in game, you could just keep switching it. You could just keep playing it so that the opposition don't know what's coming. The unpredictability factor, the fact that any of these players could take up any position at any given time, that's something too that will really help you. The fact that when Ansu Fati comes in here, maybe Lionel Messi will want to go out on the right-hand side. Maybe Dembele will want to switch to the left. But that's what it's all about. Remember when we had MSN, you didn't know where one of them was going to be at any given time. They were so, so unpredictable. Their movement was electric. Defenders couldn't pick them up. And that's what it's all about. I think they're, that's a team that has has so much creativity, so much quality there going forward. And I think when you look at our team right now, what we lack is all of that. We don't have a lot of goal scorers in this team. We don't have a lot of players there who can create chances after chances. But you look at that team and you couldn't tell me that we would not score an abundance of goals because we just would. That is quality. And I am really, really interested to know what your thoughts there on that ideal setup. Obviously, right now, the players aren't all fit. You can't exactly play the dream team that we would like to. But it is nice to look there at what we have at our disposal. Because when things seem as though they're not good, when we seem as though we're down in the dumps a bit with how things are going, there is positivity. There is light here at the end of the tunnel. Because we do have some extremely good, extremely talented players coming through. And of course, there's players like Griezmann. It's a shame that in an ideal team, team, he wouldn't be in it. And that does hurt me too, because I like him as a player. I like him as a person. But when you're looking at the future of this team, when you're looking at the best balance in the team, I just don't think he makes it. Right now, on current form, on the way that it's gone at Barca, I would rather have Ansu Fati and Ousmane Dembele either side of Lionel Messi 
with a creative midfield behind him. But let me know. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you agree. But let me know those thoughts in the comments down below as we head into a brand new year and a year that we all hope will be better for us Barca fans. Thanks as always for your incredible support right throughout 2020, guys. And let's keep moving forward and let's keep hoping for a better year to come. I will see you soon. This is me signing off 2020. But until next time, as always, Vishnu, Hell Barca. Uh -huh.